I just need a couple of minutes of your time before the service starts to tell you about our plans for the Nativity. Oh, it's only you know, these things are going to take a little bit of organising. So we're going to have our crib service, our Nativity service, on Christmas Eve. And I've sent you an email by MailChimp, your trash or your junk in case you haven't got it. It should look something, something like that, with a picture of Mary and Joseph on it. And that explains what we're trying to do. And what we'd like you to do is to take a short video of yourself, your friends, your family, dressed up as one of the characters in the Nativity, and then send that email off to Eileen. She'll gather them all together, and then we're gonna put them together to retell the story. You don't need to say any words because you just need to do a little bit of miming, a little bit of action. Then we'll tell the story over the top and we'll have some songs as well. And then we'll all come on Christmas Eve for our crib service, our retelling of the Christmas story. In the email, it's quite a long one, but have a look at it because it includes a sort of scene by scene ideas of what you might do. It also includes the reference so you can sit and have a look at the Bible and see what the Bible says about that particular scene. But the most important thing is to have fun, do as many little videos as you want to, the more the merrier. And uh, we really look forward to putting it all together and, and seeing the fruits of your hard work. Thanks ever so much. Bye. Well, welcome to St Andrews. And if you're new worshipping with us, you are most, most well. As you can see, this morning we are in the church building and uh, we are trying a whole number of new things this morning. We are working towards being able to both live stream and worship in the building. Well, not live stream in the building because obviously you'll be at home if you're live streaming and watching this online. Well, after today's service, uh, we have Zoom catch up and Abby will be there waiting for you at 11.30 on Zoom. So do make yourself a cuppa after the service and join her for a bit of chat and get to see one another and share a little bit of how your week has been. On Tuesday, there is no discipleship course because we've finished uh, the discipleship explored and we're having a week off this week. And next week, we will be starting a event course, Light in the Darkness. Now, this will only be for four weeks. And so if you would like to come and join us for just Advent conversations, preparing ourselves for Christmas, actually Christmas in a very different way, then please do come and join us. The details will be on your church update email. On Wednesday, the quiz is back with Bob, so please do join him at 7.30 for the quiz. Hopefully, or maybe, there'll be new winners this week. As I've already mentioned, the church update email comes out weekly. And if you don't receive this currently, please do put a comment in the comment box and we would gladly get this to you. Uh, there's going to be lots and lots of information coming over the next couple of weeks to do with Advent and Christmas. And uh, later on in the service, um, I've recorded notices, so but I'm just a little bit precise about what's going on. But for now, let's come before Jesus, who is our Lord and who knows us inside and out. So as we enter, we meet in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as we come to Jesus, who knows us better than anyone else, we come to him with open hearts and say that we're sorry. So what God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. So let's pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against, we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. 
renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, mighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, give us our sins. Open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so having received God's forgiveness, knowing that we are right with him, let us, wherever we are, come before him and worship our perfect Heavenly Father. Yeah. 
amazing grace. Well, today is the last in our series looking at the book of Philippians. And it ends with renewed thanks to the church in Philippi for all their support and love for him. Their gifts have not been easy donations, but sacrifices which have cost them dearly. Paul is certain that these people whom he loves so much will be blessed because of their sacrificial love. Today we're going to be thinking about how we can be content in Christ. And Mike Vine is going to be exploring that with us. But first, Eileen is going to read us our last reading from the last chapter of Philippians. Thanks so much, Eileen. Philippians 4, verses 10 to 23. I rejoice greatly in that at last I renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need. I learned to be content with the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. For as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church with me in the matter of receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I have received payment and even more. I am added now that I have received from the Paphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will need, meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Greet all the saints in Jesus Christ. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Good morning. Is it me or does anyone else feel that time is flying past this year? We've actually never been busier at work but I know that it's more than a bit dip different if you're down or self-isolated as you are vulnerable. So much has happened this year, and I am glad that we have had our church services to mark the passing of the weeks, although it is sad that we cannot all be together in our church building. Can you believe that it's eight weeks since we started the Discipleship Explored series? In the course, we've been looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians, and it might seem a bit strange that when Paul wrote this letter, he was actually had a lot going against him. When he wrote Philippians, Paul changed in Rome, but he was able to write in verse 11 of today's reading, I have learned to be whatever the circumstances. So, what's the cause of your contentment? If you've watched episode 8 of the, of the course, you'll know that for most Americans, to be content is to have about twice what they already have. The downside of that is that prosperity itself can be a source of discontent. But in Jesus Christ, Paul had everything he needed and had found his content in him who gave him his strength. Paul, walking with Jesus, had learned to be content wherever he was and what he was doing, in and in plenty. That doesn't mean he was always calm and patient. Certainly, if you read Acts, he was impatient to be doing God's work. He does seem to have mellowed a bit by the time he wrote this letter, however. Yes, physically, Paul had been in want, and the Philippians had been in providing what they could. They were not a rich church. Emotionally, he must have been dead at times, 
but being loved and receiving good things would have cheered him up. It certainly does me. Spiritually, he is all right because he was in Christ. He was more than happy there. He was content with Jesus. His future because he had a place in heaven. Two things for us in this. Firstly, do we know that we are in Christ? I mean, really, this is what the course has been about. Jesus wants to bring us to a place where we really are in his love and his power right up to there. And know we are who we are because of what Jesus has done for us. To put it another way, we need to be able to say, I am who I am because I am in Christ. Okay, I'm not perfect, but I'm being made perfect in Jesus, by Jesus, through what Jesus has done for me. To quote Paul in another passage, to live and to die is gain. Not yet. But I, will, I can be content in that. Like Paul, we can do everything through him who gives us the strength. Right now, it doesn't matter whether or not we know Jesus in this way. Jesus wants us to know he is there for us. He, he is waiting to stop searching for him and let him scoop us up and say, here I am. Here and now, as we open our hearts to Jesus, I can, you can, and we can be content in and through Jesus Christ. This is the contentment that Paul felt even though he was in chains. So we come to the second thing from Paul this morning. Paul was cheered up because he had heard from the Philippians. So let's ask ourselves, who can we cheer up today? I ask that because a lot of us seem to be so sad, down and silent. Now, some of that is due to the nights drawing in, but there's also pandemic fatigue coupled with being locked down. It doesn't help that we're told of breakthroughs and more people catching COVID at the same time. The increases in COVID levels are now. The breakthroughs seem to be months away before they're going to come to fruition. And then the politicians don't seem to be able to make their minds up. There does seem to be an awful lot going against us. Or is it? I wonder. There is a lot which needs our prayers. Yes, there are a lot of people needing a lot of a little joy and happiness spreading around. But can we do something about it? For Paul, it was the Philippians' gift that lifted him physically and emotionally, and for which he gives thanks and glory to God for their faithfulness. For Paul, it was a sign that they remembered him fondly. It wasn't just the gift. It was the love that lay behind it. The gift was given in love and received in love doesn't need to be a big thing, but who can we cheer up today and how shall we do it? Paul gave us a list of good things which will brighten up anyone's day in verses 8 and 9. You might remember last week, whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure or lovely, whatever is admirable. See, it doesn't matter how big or how small it is that we do, as long as it's intended to build up the ones we're talking to, and then God will bless it. Now, the Philippians sent gifts to Paul regularly, and they were a great blessing to him. I can't do that, but let me give you something to smile at right now. Meet Arthur. That's our grandson. He's five weeks old. Isn't he cute? At five weeks old, he's hard work for his mum and dad, but he's also joy for them and for many others, and I hope for you this morning. You know, it's easy to be fed up. I'm a member of a club that, until March, regularly met to play games. Not being able to do that is not fun. But the time will come. In the meantime, I can still regularly meet with my father in heaven. Actually, I start every day with him out of bed and look out of the window and then say, Good morning, Lord. It looks horrible out there. Well, it is when the weather is horrible. It's nice most of the time. And re-establish whom I am in Jesus. 
That's for me, for my benefit. God knows I'm in Christ. As I was walk walking on this talk last week, it was what you might call a dreary Saturday morning. I opened behind where I was typing up my words so I could look at clouds glowering down on us and smiled. It was brightening up and it looked like it was going to be a lovely day for a walk. Our walk turned out to be totally brilliant, in the wet and in the mud and in the rain. We came home rejoicing. We Paul rejoiced greatly to the Philippians. He knew their foibles and their failings, and he mentions them in the letter, but he also knew that they were in Christ, listed in the book of life and demonstrating that by showing their concern for him. Similarly, we can show we are in Christ by the good things that we do, not out of a desire for reward. We already have that. But because those things show our Father's love for the world, to the world. Paul knew that our God will meet all the Philippians' needs, but he could also have been saying that to us as well. God will meet needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Of course, that needs and not our wants. The wonderful thing is that as we rest more in Jesus and become more content in him, our wants will match our needs and our ability to help others will expand. Then we can join in with verse 20 and declare, To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. In closing, I and you and we need Jesus to peace right now. We all rest content in him. Our, our reading finishes with Paul's words, The grace of the Lord Jesus be with your spirit. Amen. Amen to that. And that's a prayer for us. Lord Jesus, help us to open our hearts to you. We ask that you to come right now and live in our lives and help us to know you and rest and be content in you. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear.
And so, before we come our prayers, uh, we we'll just spend a moment thinking about those whom we are praying for particularly this week. And so we hold in our prayers those who are sick or suffering, who are bereaved. And we think of Paul Mathers, baby Roshin, Irene Westhead, Marie Laycock, Bill Dudley, Michael, baby Edward, baby Isaac, Pete, Pat Rowbottom, and Irene Clegg. In terms of the bereaved, we pray, continue to pray for the Smithy family, for the Latham Holt family, and for the family of Linda. And so Joyce is going to lead us in our prayers of vision. And when we come to the time where we pray for those who are sick or suffering, those that are known to us, let's hold those people, those families, in God's hands. Faithful and loving God, we pray for the governments of our world and for leaders nationally and locally, and ask that in these troubled and confusing times, you raise up your people into places of power. That be strong in leadership, just wise, honest and consistent in all they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our communities throughout the UK and particularly here in Radcliffe and at St Andrews. For local businesses, our schools, playgroup, our friends and neighbours, pray for our children and families, keep them all away from harm, May our homes be places of love and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for your church at St Andrews, for all the different encouragement groups. May we be loving and supportive of each other. We pray for Jo as she continues to lead us in faithfulness and commitment and for the teams of people working with her. We ask you to allow your people here to be beacons of hope, compassion and strength. And by our lives, be like your son Jesus, drawing others to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those known to us who are sick and in need of your healing touch. For those who are in despair, fragile or broken hearted. For those who hurt emotionally, who cry out silent prayers. For those who grieve and mourn the loss of a loved one, who can never be filled. We pray for those too broken or discouraged to pray for themselves. And we lift before you those who have not even the strength to lift us. For Father, we know you are a, a God of miracles, of hope, of kindness, God of compassion. A God who does not remain hidden, but us and knows our needs. In the silence, Father, we lift the names to you of those known who need that special touch from you today and trust that you will meet them where they are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we ask that you will be with us as we move forward into a new week. Holy Spirit, guide our thoughts and actions. Let us speak with words of love and encouragement, of words that joy and peace. Open our eyes and ears to those who may need to know in a deeper way this week. May we bring you glory in all we do. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now bringing all our prayers and praises together, let's say together the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in give us our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen And so we've come to a few verses. Please do keep your eye on the church update email. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, we will be communicating a little we'll be doing over Advent and Christmas. It's also a way of communicating news to you. Uh, this Christmas, we are having a Christmas gift donation. This will be towards purchasing live streaming equipment for the St Andrews building. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been able to broadcast from the building, but currently it's a little untidy and we need more equipment to combine online broadcasting and having people in the building. So during Advent, up to Christmas Day, we shall be having opportunity to give a financial gift to church. Donations can be made through Facebook, cheque or a bank transfer. And if you write a cheque or do a bank transfer, please put Christmas gift um, as a reference so that we know uh, that it's for the Christmas gift donation. We really appreciate all that people give and this is just over and above so that we can equip the building. Uh, this week the discipleship course finished and we're having a week off and then on Tuesday the 1st of December we will, shall be starting our Light in the Darkness Advent um, course. Uh, these will be more like a series of conversations on Tuesdays uh, 7.30 to 8.30 on Zoom and so if you'd like to join us uh, please do uh, come on to Zoom and the login details with the church update email. It's just a really good way of us preparing for Christmas during Advent. Well, next Sunday, we will be having our toy, toy donation and you can bring your new toys to St Andrew's building on the 29th of November, 11.30 till 1. Um, on the church update email is a list of donations that you can bring and there are also some donations that you can make to CAP2. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to need your help to prepare for our Christmas services. And firstly, we're asking you for pictures of you with the word joy. Send your photos and your videos to St Andrew's Grapevine at Outlook.com or to WhatsApp with the number that is attached. We are also preparing for a nativity play and so um, sent out this week via MailChimp for some more um, information about uh, pre-recording for that. If you'd like to know more information, please do get in touch with Bob. Uh, post should be coming your way. Uh, this week we're going to be sending you a little something through the post and uh, you'll be getting 40 inviting you to light these each Thursday at tea time p.m. and put them in your window and pray for the NH and those working on a vaccine, praying for a glimmer of hope, something that we'll do as a church family. So please do keep your eye out on the church um, update email. It's full of information. I know these notices seem to be wrong, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to read now and understand it maybe a little bit better.
forgotten to turn my microphone back on, so apologies for that. So, um, just the giving, at the, um, just to say thank you to God for all that he gives to us. So, thanking him for him providing. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, for all that you provide for us. And Lord, would you receive our cash donations, our standing orders, our envelopes. And we pray, Father, that we would use these offerings wisely and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we're going to gather together and sing Cornerstone.
Thank you so much for bearing with us this morning. And so I'm just going to revisit the birthdays that we've had this week. So yesterday it was Jake Regini's uh, birthday. Today it's Joyce Hurdson's birthday. And into the week to come, it's Grace Conley's birthday. Happy birthday to you guys. And I hope you have a really good day. Um, I also, at this point, want to thank uh, the tech team who are in church with me, and uh, we're trying to work out how we live stream from the building. Uh, we're using a different laptop this morning, and we've been using the microphones from church. Um, so please, thank you so much for bearing with us when there has been some hitches. This is one of the reasons why we're trying to work on our live streaming in church so that we can get rid of some of these glitches and learn how we do this for uh, the month. So thanks guys so much for being here and helping this morning. So don't forget there's Zoom after this service. I have to say, I'm really looking forward to getting home. My feet are frozen and I can't actually feel my toes anymore because it's really cold here in the building. Next week is the beginning of Advent and so we'll be um, starting to prepare for Christmas. So thank you for joining with us here online. But thanks be to God that he is wherever we are worshipping. And so a blessing. May God the Father keep you in all your ways. May Christ shield you in all your ways. May the Spirit do healing and peace. May God the Holy Trinity drive all darkness and pour upon us your blessing and light. So filled with the Father's love and Spirit's power, go light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Take care and God bless.